what you got there, Gordon? Oh, look at that time. Now that is a solid little sewing so -so. Danny, what you doing there, you little track rat? Nothing, Solly. See my uncle Eddie anywhere? I'm willing to bet he's over there at the barn, doing a little voodoo hoodoo on that hard luck horse of yours. Thanks. Now you see your uncle, you tell him to call me. I got some business to discuss with him, some good business. You got it. Manifest Wind, the pride of our three-year-olds. Can we get one with y'all on Manifest Wind? Certainly. Sure. Right there. I want to thank all of you for coming out, and we will see you this afternoon at the races. Miss Lawson, could he be a contender for the Tucker Stakes? We'll see. Harlan, is he ready? And I mean really ready. Can't afford mistakes this season. Mrs. Slauson, I would stake my career on it. Oh, Harlan, let's hope it doesn't come to that. See you in the paddock this afternoon. So, how's he doing, Charlie? He's still pretty swollen. Hey, Eddie. Hey, Danny. Not off to school yet? I'm getting there. Gotta see Mooney first. Can't that guy do his own spying around the track? But Solly said he needs to talk to you. Yeah? You say what about? I don't know. It's good business, he said. Well, good. We could use some good business. Think old Mr. How'd you do has a chance today? Absolutely. If it rains. What you got? Figure it out for yourself. You sure about these times? Ever known me to be wrong? Don't spend it all in one place, okay? Say, what do you know about a horse named Manifest Wind? Slauson bred, McVee trained, royal blood on both sides of the family, probably a contender for the Tucker Stakes. They were parading him in front of the press this morning. Yeah, he's running in the seventh today. First race ever. I trained him off track. <laughs> I wouldn't touch that race with a 10-foot pole. He looked pretty good. Yeah, well, looks ain't everything. I guess. Would you mind? Give it here. Five for the number two horse to win in the first. Five for the number four in the second. But only if it's over seven to two. And... And? And ten for manifest wind in the seventh. A hunch bet. A hunch bet? I thought I taught you better. Sometimes, Well, right? sometimes is never when you're betting without stats. It's your money. I'll pick the rest up after school. Thanks, Mooney. Lunch bet.
stable. Now the winner circle is Manifest Win. Huh. Hunchback. Who'd you have to win here? Who else? Manifest Win. So you have all the luck. I know my horse is there. Yeah, so I'll go check on our horses and clean up. I'll meet you at home. Great race, Mrs. Lawson. Oh, well, thank you, dear. I had him to win, too. You did? Boy, you took the first pole like a champ. Didn't you think you slowed down in the last stretch? Oh, and this young girl wants your job. Well, from the mouths of babes. You got lucky this time, kid. Mooney. Just remember, all hunch players die broke. See you in the morning. Gotta be honest, Pop. This is not the season for two-year-olds. Eddie's having a tough time finding any to condition. And all the big barns seem to be buying the promising youngsters at the auctions. We're trying our best. What can you do with just a couple of broken down horses? I'm concentrating more on my handicapping. Which I know you wouldn't approve of, Mama, but how else can we make ends meet? Hey, Danny, hold me a 20, huh? Sorry, I don't got... Yeah, I've seen your winnings. Empty. See? What about that one right there? Are there savings at it? Come on, just till tomorrow. Look, if we're ever going to get ahead, we have to follow our budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get... Absolutely, positively not. The savings. You know what your trouble is? You're too old for your age. <clears throat> Gonna be a late night. Now I got that meeting in the morning with Cornell Baines. The big shot old Sally trains for? Yeah. What do you want to talk about? Yeah. And you're going out tonight? Just a couple of beers with the guys. Nothing doing. A meeting like that, you need a good night's rest. Hey, who's the adult here anyway? Sally here tells me magic touch it. <laughs> That's so? Uh, I don't know about magic. Admired your brother very much. One fine horseman. John was the best. Trained wild wonder. Am I right? Yes, sir. Ah, oh, what a horse. What a horse. He would have beat them all in Tucker Stakes if he'd had the chance. Terrible tragedy, that car wreck. John and Molly, they were good people. They had a little girl. Uh, Danny. Danielle. Well, to business. Eddie, I grabbed a little filly at auction last summer. Good price, good blood. Now, she don't do much in the morning. She's a real loafer. <laughs> and Sally doesn't have time to mess with the horse, so we, uh, you know. We figure we're gonna take her out of state, run her one of them little tracks, show she can win, then bring her back in, sell her off real fast. I told Mr. Baines, Eddie Fortuna's the man for that job. Well, I'm, I'm flattered. I told Mr. Baines, I don't know how he'd do it, but he'd do it. <laughs> Life is fit to kill a man. I've been rubbing horses so long, I forget there's a world out there. Why don't you just get your trainer's license? Oh, yeah. I can show these yahoos a few tricks they ain't dreamed of. But I'm just a backstretch stable bum. Nothing more, and nobody's gonna change it. Besides, you need a horse before you can train it. But I got me this dream, see? 
been saving my money. Get me out of this place. You know, Florida, California, somewhere where it doesn't snow. I'm gonna have my own place and be my own boss. And somebody come into my place showing me attitude, well, I just show them the door with the business in of my Buster Brown. I got a dream, too. I hope so. What's this world without dreaming? I keep dreaming about this house. Not a fancy house. Just a house. Real plumbing, fireplace, some wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, a little white picket fence all around. Well, that sounds like a wonderful house. Yep. One horse could do it, Gerald. One great horse is all Eddie and I need. Then we'd own a dozen champions. People would come from all over the world just to bid on a fortune a yearly. Sounds like a mighty reasonable dream. No reason it can't come true. Yeah, well, it's not gonna come true with Mr. How did you hobbling around the track, that's for sure. That bad, huh? You don't wanna know. Mm. Eddie said if things get any worse, I may have to go live with my old grandma Temple. That a bad thing? I'd rather be boiled in oil. I'm saving up money, and soon I'll be old enough to get a real job. Yeah, things will work out. All you need is a little luck. A little magic. Magic? You mean like all that stuff in fairy tale books, like wishing on a star? Now that's the very thing I'm talking about. Stuff's for babies. Babies, huh? <laughs> Come on over here. I can tell I got some educating to do. Now, grab hold of this wood and say after me. Rub on wood, sure to come good. This is silly. Uh, don't silly me now. Just grab hold. I'm gonna get splintered. No, you won't either. Now, just grab hold, like I said. Come on. Now, close your eyes. This is the important part, all right? Rub on wood, sure to come. You need to be saying this with me. OK? All right. You ready? OK. Rub on wood, sure to come good. Rub on wood. Sure, sure to come. come good. <laughs> yes, there you go, Danny. You were natural at rubbing that wood. <laughs> they gonna kill that horse before he win his first race. Who's that? That horse is named Tom Thumb. <laughs> Not a big horse. Training him. It's lost and bombs over there. If you don't kill him first. Yeah. That's what you want. Hmm? 
you're a good boy. What do you want? What do you want? You can't eat my jacket. Wow, you've got some family too, Tom. I got news. Me too. Mine's better. Doubtful. See that filly over there tripping over her own hooves? Yeah. We are training that filly for Cornell Baines. What do you think of them apples? Not bad. Yeah, taught me. I just came across a horse that'll set us up for life. Hey, Charlie. Danny here's got a horse gonna take us straight to the money. Never have to worry about anything again. What's that, boss? I'm serious, you. This horse is perfect for us. His name's Tom Thumb. His father was none other than Celtic Tom. Celtic Tom? And this boy got the same spirit. And where is this son of Celtic Tom that's ours for the asking? Slauson Farms. Oh, of course. And Harlan McVie's just going to hand him right over, and Mrs. Slauson's going to sign the papers. Just because I'm 11, Eddie, doesn't mean you have to treat me like I'm stupid. I'm telling you. There's a shop they might try to dump him. Says who? He's got some problems. They're having a tough time with him. Well, if Parliament V can't handle the horse, I sure don't want it. I bet we could make them an offer. Wait a I second. Aren't you the one who's always that? lecturing me about saving money? This is different. How's it different? It's business. Oh, no, this is our business. I'm going to take this filly upstate, win her a race, bring her back down, then I'm going to hand her over to Big Sully, bing, bang, boom, pocket full of change to take care of that stack of unpaid bills in our closet. Inside, work her closer. She don't want to run this morning, boss. We could borrow the money. Well, of course she don't want to go. She's spoiled rotten. He's got to make her go. Danny, nobody's going to loan us a dime with my credit. Come on, Sid. Give her her head. Yeah, that's better. I bet I could win enough to buy Tom. If I have stick. But if pigs had wings, they could fly. Next subject. If you could just take a look at him. Oh, come on, Squirt. You're forgetting one very important fact. The horse isn't for sale. Yeah, but... Have you heard the horse is for sale? No. I haven't heard did... the horse is for sale. The horse isn't for sale. Eddie. And even if the horse was for sale, I wouldn't buy it. Because of Slauson Farms and selling that horse on the open market is because his teeth are falling out or it's blind in one eye. People like that don't sell horses to people like us. You drive me crazy. Likewise. Nice wreck. Yeah, I'll tell Mr. Baines you approve. That's all set, boss. Great, thanks. Uh, now, Charlie's going to be taking care of the barn. I talked to the market about extending our credit till I get back, so anything you need, you get. Uh, Mrs. Crane's gonna stay with you, so you listen to her, all right? I'll be fine. All right, and, and you got my number in case you need to reach me, okay? All right, Danny, what is it about this horse? It was like, I don't know, magic or something. Cool. Eddie, you know me. I don't go in for all that storybook kiss a frog, get a prince kind of thing, but this was different. Different? Real different. He looked at me. I mean, really looked at me. And I knew, just knew, we were meant to be. Look, I know it sounds stupid. You don't have to tell me. Hey, will you listen? It doesn't sound stupid. Really? Really. When I get back, maybe we'll take a look at it, all right? Yeah. No promises. No promises. It's a deal. Be good. Be good. Don't forget your homework. Hey, Come on, come on. Come on, come on. 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 Come
Somebody want to ship a horse there. Miracles happen at Gillespie Field. Horses that couldn't get a diploma on the fair circuit magically win a race there. Gee, maybe it's the weather. I looked it up. All they have is claiming races there. Only no horses ever get claimed. And if they do, they're back in the original owner's barn within a week. Ooh, spooky. How exactly does a claiming race work anyway? Well, simple. When you're starting a horse out, you want to put him in a low-level race, like a claiming race, so it's easier for him to get a win. But there is risk involved because anybody can buy the horse, whether you want to sell him or not. Anyone can claim any horse in the race? Sure, although there is risk there, too, because you have to put the money up for the horse before the race. And no matter what happens out of the gate, you own the horse. Like if he falls down and gets hurt? Even if he breaks a leg. Of course. Thanks, Mooney. You've been a big help. Sure. Anytime. See ya. Mo White, back in town, huh? Great. That is just great. How does he do it, Mooney? He's the highest of the high rollers. He never seems to lose. Simple. He's from another planet. They beam him down here. He makes a pile of dough enough to balance the budget of Alpha Centauri. Then zip, whoosh, they beam him back up again. Seriously, Mooney. Seriously? Seriously, I haven't got the slightest idea how he picks his horses. All I know is that he seems to win a lot more than he loses. He doesn't like doing any monkey business, right? No, no, he's just a smart player, and I hate him for it. See, guys like Mo White, they twist the vibes and tweak the odds. It gives me the heebie-jeebies just thinking about it. So, uh, we're talking the four horse here, huh? Mm -hmm. Excuse me, my little doll. Sorry, mister. You need to move, Saver. It's not the best of times, kid. Got the scoop from Mo White. Yeah. Win. Place. No, no. All to win on the four horse. You're crazy. I'm telling you, you went on the full horse. It's your dog.
three is the first of the pick six races. Races three through eight, you are pick six. Pick six? Are you bonkers? I hope not. days like today. I'm still short. All right. I'm glad he's gone. Sure, give her mash tonight, Gerald. She done good. Oh, Sally was right, Eddie. You do have a special way. Well, she just needs some attention. Proper shilling. Oh, isn't he modest? A little something for your trouble, Eddie. Meet me at the turf club someday. Buy you a drink. Change is pleased. I told you this would be a cinch. Thanks for the help, Sally. All you want. Hey, now all I did was give you the opportunity. Just like I done with your brother John. Little nudge here, little schmooze there, but Johnny did the work. <laughs> John was the best, wasn't he? Now, don't you sell yourself short, Eddie. You know these horses like you was one. And I'll tell you something, they ain't seen what you done with that hard luck case. Next time the right opportunity comes up, Big Solly gonna make sure you are in. Thanks, Solly. Thanks. Oh, I've done it. Gone one week, I got two horses. One's got the cough, the other needs a dentist. Doc says a lot of that going around, Eddie. Oh, great, that's just great. And the feed guy says he's not making another delivery until he gets paid. <laughs> well, easy come, easy go. What else? I gotta leave you. I got an offer I can't turn down. From who? Harlan McVee's barn. Harlan McVee. Slauson Farms is a top outfit. And we're having a great meet. I got a wife, a new baby boy. <laughs> hey, Charlie, you ever notice that sometimes you just can't get ahead for trying? Hey, Danny. Well? Well what? How did it go? It went. Did you recover? Yes. Did she win? Did the filly get her win? Yeah, no corn dogs. Uh-uh. Is Bans happy? Static. Can we go check out Tom Thumb? No. I should be out of my mind dragging a little girl around a race circuit like this. Daddy. You should be in a nice neighborhood and a nice school and playing with kids your own age. Listen, I'm doing... You know, you're turning to attract degenerate right before my eyes. Betting and spying and trying to buy a horse with no money. I've got news on that. Look, we're not going to take a look at this horse, okay? Or any horse for that matter. You understand? 
You don't have to yell, you know. I'm not yelling, but the thing is, we're barely hanging on here. So no more talk about Tom Thumb, okay? You wish I wasn't here, Eddie. Is that it? Yeah, sometimes. No, no, that, that's not what I meant. Look. Hey. Hey, 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 look here. Come here. You're the best thing in my whole life. I wouldn't trade you for a million dollars. No kidding. No kidding. Two million, maybe. Oh, no, all right. I have three million, not a penny less. I'm just not sure how good a job I'm doing sometimes. Doing fine. Yeah. Well, you know what your papa always used to say? If you don't know what the best thing to do is, just keep on doing what you know how to do best. All we need is a little luck, that's all. Mm. Luck ain't been much of a factor around here lately. That's the thing about luck. Favors the long shot. Favors the long shot. Yeah. Maybe it wouldn't hurt to take just a little pick at that racehorse. It wouldn't hurt at all. Might give us uh, some ideas. Lots of ideas. Hey, Eddie, you left your tack over at Dane's. Well, look who just showed up at the perfect moment. What? Gillespie Fields is in Ohio. Kentucky isn't the only place they race horses, just seems that way. I don't mind telling you, anybody catches us in here, we in a pot full of trouble. Hey, Tom, it's me. Come on, let's take a look at you. His hooves are kind of narrow. He's a little over at the knee. His daddy was just like that. Celtic Tom was a big horse. 16-2. Wish he had a little more slope to his shoulder. Barely 16 hands. But I'd expect his stoutness makes up for the squareness. His forelegs look strong enough, though. <laughs> Eddie, I think Danny found a real horse. Huh. Well, he's running tomorrow. Tomorrow? What kind of race? $7,000 claiming race. First time three-year-olds. It's pretty cheap. Does McVie really think nobody's going to claim this horse? At Gillespie Fields? The stands are populated with pet food reps. Nobody's gonna pay seven bits for a couple of cans of dog food. Then why? Oh, who knows why these big barns do anything? They got all them charts and fancy guys with calculators working out things for them. <laughs> Some horsemen, eh? <laughs> this is crazy. We don't have seven thousand dollars. Yeah, I only have thirty-nine hundred saved up. Thirty-nine. That little girl knows her horses. <laughs> I hit the pick six. Tried to tell you. Yeah, well, uh, if I still leave a short, I only got 1,100. Feedman took the rest of what I got from Baines. I'm sorry, Danny, I really am, because uh, I'm impressed you picked a real good horse here. My mom would say, no sense waiting for the apple to fall when it's right there in front of you, ready for picking. I've been saving my pennies. Wait a now, second, Gerald. I don't have much, but it's enough to stake you the difference. I can't borrow that money from you. I wasn't intending on loaning you money, Eddie. I want in as a partner. Unless you got some problem with that. I got no problem. All right. Yes. Did you see a trainer's license? Yes. Claim for yourself, Mr. Uh, Fortuna? Yeah, it's for me. Uh, for us. For me? Yeah, for me, I guess. <clears throat> You need a 10% deposit in cash. Danny? One, two, three, four, five, six, 
Oh, another claim went out on that horse this morning. You'll roll the dice right after the race. Oh, I can't roll dice to save my life. Well, it looks like the number eight horse, Tom Thumb, seems to be having some difficulty joining the other horses at the gate. There he goes now. Looks pretty good. Well, we'll see how he does on the sloppy track. Tell me you're the other claim. Here I am, helping you out every chance I get. Turns out you're in the horse claiming business. Yeah, but we didn't know it was. Now, what is my groom doing with you all? He's a friend. He just came along for the ride. There you go. Gentlemen, shall we? Tell you, Sully, I'm lousy at rolling the dice. You see him out of the gate there, Eddie? Oh, no kidding, huh? Ooh, he wasn't <laughs> ranked, but old Baines, he wants him. Believe me, that's one headache you're better off without. unclear how delicate our position is this season. No, ma'am. You have been perfectly clear. Then how could something like this happen? A mistake. An accident. Not an acceptable answer. I've handled problem horses like this dozens of times before, and I had somebody there to cover the claim. I'm not interested. All I know is the son of Celtic Tom, a horse from one of our farms, was claimed by a trainer, his niece and a groom? Can you imagine what the press will make of this if, if this horse wins just one race? <laughs> Unlikely. I want nothing left to chance. What would you like for me to do? Fix it. 
We need the race and public's focus on manifest win. We simply cannot afford any distractions. Do we understand each other? Yes, ma'am. I just, I love the fall weather. Don't you, Holland? Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Welcome to your new home, Tom. Good to have you here. I don't want you getting your hopes up here now. This horse has a lot of work ahead of him. A lot of unlearning to do. I know. All right, off to school. All right, Tom, come on. How you do? Morning, sunshine. Things didn't go well in Sully. Gave me the boot. Uh, I could talk to him. Oh, it wouldn't do no good. Enough words said between us to call it quits. It's been a long time coming. I'm sorry, Gerald. Well, nobody was holding me by the foot. But if it's OK with you, I'd like to bunk in the tack room for a while. Hey, our home is your home, partner. Thanks. Did you see this? Yeah, I saw it last night. McVie wasn't so far off the mark testing his running legs. Yeah, you know, these big bonds ain't got time to work on something like that. Time we got. <laughs> Come on, Tom. Time to go to school. Bad, he says. Come on, what do you think? What are you looking to start him in? Seven furlongs. A small stakes race next Wednesday. That's taking a mighty chaw off a little cigar. Well, Kent, we don't expect him to win. Well, what's in it for me then? I don't want to be passing up a better horse. Wait a second, Mike. Listen, something here. Are you racing under an assumed name? You're lucky to get two mounts a day. That's all the more reason to be picky. Well, don't get cocky on me now. All right, uh, I'll give you W or fee if he's out of the money, and triple your cut if he's in. Double my fee. Triple your cut. Well, all right. You better win. If I'd known this wishing stuff worked, I'd have tried it years ago. Today's the day you're going to show them all.
five to one we're giving him. What kind of an insult is that? <laughs> All right, who picked these out? Great, huh? No one will have trouble finding me in the field. All right, listen. I want you to touch him on the shoulder at the stretch to remind him why he's there, but don't lay into him. He hates the whip, all right? Okay. All right. All right. Let's go get a seat. Come on. Laggy is up. Yes, they're off. You what do. the heck he, was that all about? I was doing it for you. You didn't have to do anything. Just she knows more about racing than you do. The heck with all of you. Mr. Fortuna, do you mind? Mr. McVee, please sit down. I don't know what they're doing on that track out there. Hard as cement. You know what I mean? I got a little filly picked up a rock this morning. Ouch. Mm -hmm. So how's Tom treating you? <laughs> I think you know the story. Yes, indeed, Mr. Porter. Uh, Eddie. Eddie. I've had some experiences with him. Mm. I got to say, you surprised me for him to claim on him. I guess you had your eye on him. Actually, not many folks drive up to Gillespie to look for horses to claim. Some do. Hmm. I'm not usually prone to errors in judgment, but I caught some grief on that. Well, ain't that just a horse racing business? Yeah. Well, if it gets too much for you to handle, a rogue like that can suck you dry. Run by the barn. Maybe we can work out something. Dick, hold up there, man. Nice talking to you, McVeigh. Hey, Eddie. Good. You got a second for me? I don't know. I'm very popular this morning. Listen, Eddie. About yesterday, I gave your horse a lousy ride. And I'm sorry. Go on. Tom's a game little guy. He would have been up there if I'd have laid my stick off him. <laughs> no kidding. I know. I should have listened. I'd be willing to give it another try if you're willing. Well, we're not going to run him again until Keeneland. Then Keeneland it'll be. In the meantime, you need to do any schooling with him. I'll be your bug boy. What do you say? He's got it, you know. I can feel it. That little horse has got a heart the size of Kentucky. Don't you know it? Thanks. <laughs> this is it, Squirt. We're headed for the big time. Keen. You have no idea how many times your pop and I dream about this. I knew we'd be here, I knew it. This is just great. Tom's going to love it here. So beautiful. Hey, we're chopping in the tall cotton now, aren't we, girl?
Finland, land of champions. And just because you're different, don't let anybody tell you you're not a champion. You're going to show them all. They see you running your heart out. They'll know. They'll know. They'll say, there goes Tom Thumb, son of Celtic Tom. What a champ. Oh, I love you too, Tom. Don't be loony, listen to Mooney. That's what Mooney says. Only two bucks a pop, two bucks a crack. Hey, kid. Thank you. Also now being saddled in the paddock for the first of today's exciting ten race program. All right, Tom, let's do it right this time. Now, away they go. All of you have to come off to a good beginning. It's Jojo Monkey, who's quickest in the stride. Left dog is showing some early speed as well, and Tom Thumb is tucked in right behind the leader, down at the rail. Into the first turn they go, and it's Jojo Monkey. Pulling out his hair. <laughs> did I? You did good, just like I knew you would. I thought you'd be sore after this. Sore? Eddie? We're like family. I'm here to welcome you to the club. You got your jump up in class, and I'm proud of you. And what's more important, your brother'd be proud of you, too. Thanks, Sully. Thanks. You did look good, did you? <laughs> hey, you're buying dinner. Hey, check out the morning paper. That'll give you something to sing about. Gotcha.
owned and trained by Edward S. Fortuna. Son of the great Celtic Tom, little Tom Thumb had his first win yesterday by nose. Could another Slauson Forms progeny be making headlines this season? I know, I'll, I'll try again. Eddie, you got a minute? Well, a minute I haven't got, Harlan. What's up? If I could come straight to the point, it's about your horse. What horse is that? Oh, Eddie, you only have one horse, Tom Thumb. <laughs> and Mrs. Slauson wants him back. She's sincere. And she's known to be quite generous in sentimental matters. Sentimental? Well, she did grow up with Tom's daddy. Now, I can't begin to understand her emotions. But the point is, she's willing to offer a very substantial sum. Harlan. Now it's my turn to be frank. See, I have very little to say in the matter. I'm not sure I understand. I've only got 10% of the horse. Gerald's got 20. You see, my niece is the majority owner. Eddie, I'm trying to be serious. Oh, me too, especially me. Look, I'll ask her, but, uh, you know, she's sentimental too. That's sweet or what? Huh? What are you working on there? Figuring out how Tom was a little longer distance. Distance like what? A mile and a quarter. No way. Mile tops. How come? Because he's just not built for it. That's how it come. I wouldn't be so sure. I've been looking at most of the three-year-olds at the meet, those that have a chance, comparing their quarter times Tom's quarter times, then taking their final quarter time and comparing them to Tom's final oh, quarter hold time. Hold on there. You're just number pushing. Now, if Mooney wants to sell that kind of junk to the betting public, fine. It's got nothing to do with racing horses. Just listen a second. Tom takes a back stretch slow. We know that. But in the final stretch, guess which horse comes closest to Tom's final quarter time? Don't know. Guess. Don't care. Manifest win. Yeah. See, there's lots of early speed horses. Early speed wins the race. Why is Tom winning? Because he hasn't gone up against horses with a lot of speed yet. That's how it come. Mooney says it ain't how Mooney fast the says, horse wonder. Mooney says, if that guy was so smart, he'd be living in the south of France. But he's not. Eats. What you know? Nice. Want to go for a ride in our new car? Sure. Beautiful. Hey, you can't. See you in the winter circle. Nice looking. Thank you, sir. Who's is he? Excuse me? Who owns them? I do. Nice looking. Stakes. <laughs> what? Well, Danny, there's a big difference between the races he's been winning and the Tucker Stakes. A win's a win. Well, not when you're talking about going nose to nose with the likes of Manifest Win or, or any of the top class contenders. Tom could do it. He's got the class and the heart. 
Maybe he can run the distance. You give him a chance. Well, we'll see. Well, now, is this here the 84 Tuna private box? Hey, Sully. Hey, you, Sully. How you doing? I'm gonna look after Mr. How'd you do? Give the old man his mineral bath. Come on, Danny, give me a hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just thought I'd come by and congratulate you once again. Thanks, Sully. Boy, you keep winning the way you do, you're gonna have owners coming out of woodwork. Well, I can handle that. You uh, got some offers then? Oh, just some talk, you know. Yeah, I'm sure. I got a little idea myself. Yeah, what's that? Yeah, Baines is all for it. Bring the boy in, he says. Give us a little taste of his magic, he says. Baines likes what you're doing at the meet. What are you talking about here? Wasn't it obvious, Eddie? I'm asking you to come in with me. You're kidding. I know. I know I should have done it years ago, but I'm doing it now. Wait, we could do with that little horse of yours? All <laughs> Bane's money behind us? Well, I'd have to talk it over with Gerald and Danny. We're partners. Eddie, I'm offering you a solid opportunity here. I mean, this, this is Big Solly talking to you. We're, we're like family, I thought. Well, Solly, wait. I, uh... I'm looking for my move up in class, too. And I'm going to have to have a worthy successor. Sully, I'm just saying, give me some time to think about it. All right. Just remember, Eddie, you're a winning trainer now. Take advantage of that. It ain't going to last forever. Did he use? Penicillin. Wouldn't have hurt him, but it would show up in a drug screening and gotten us suspended. Get a good look at this guy? Oh, yeah. I saw him. You ever seen him before? No. Not from around here. Excuse us for a I heard about your troubles. Some sorry state we dropped into. Yeah, look, look, I can't prove it, but I'm pretty sure it's Harlan at V. Pretty sure. Well, Mrs. Slauson's got him in hot water about letting that horse go. Well, Yeti, if you don't have any proof, <laughs> can't do diddling. Even if you had proof. Against people like that, you know the drill. What are you saying? I, I should just uh, back off, take a hint, keep my place, be a good boy? Be smart, Eddie. Look, I got a lousy nickel and dime public barn. I know that. I got one horse, count him, one horse who's finally bringing me and Danny a little respect. And if that's not part of their plan, well, that's too bad. Don't get your blood in the boy. Look, look I am going to keep what little I got. Now, you can bet on that. Hey, get cleaned up. What's cooking? We're going visiting. Nobody's going to mess with us. Not now that we finally got a chance. You called her? Just like that? Just like that. Told her we needed to talk. She said, come right up. Bring you too. Me? You. I suppose she wants to pat you on the head or give you a lollipop or something. Oh, great.
Mr. Fortuna. Ma'am? I'm so glad you called. I've been wanting to meet the gentleman who's having such splendid success with my little Tom Plum. Harlan? Yes, ma'am. Take Mr. Fortuna and show him our bonds, and then we'll just meet later in the Rose Garden for some tea. And you. That's such a lovely name. Um, Eddie. Come on. You are in for a real treat. You know, when I was your age, you couldn't pry me away from the barns. I'd be right out there, wiping down those horses, feeding those horses, even playing cards with the grooms. I and my mother would just be horrified. But my father would say, now, Martha, you just let her be. She's a horsewoman. Now, I find that I spend more time here, in my rose garden. Strange how things are as you, as you get older. Her great 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 grandfather brought one of the first Darley coats from Ireland over here in 1784. Would you believe? I'm impressed. We have quite a collection of 24 karat horse flesh in this barn. Eddie. Yeah. Uh, Slauson Farms is probably as close to heaven as two horsemen like you and I are liable to get. Look, Harlan. We've got doodads and gadgets in here. Most of them some modern. I don't want half of them do. Eddie, the days of liniment and. Hot wraps are just about over. I was impressed to learn that you actually discovered Tom. Yes, ma'am. You even raised the money to claim him? I sure did. You're a precocious young lady. And I intend to give you the respect that I would give any adult. Manifest Wind is our champion this season. We expect for him to be the winner of the Tucker Stakes. You're that sure? Completely. But like any good horse player, I, I prefer to hedge my bets. Please. $50,000. Eddie, can I come right to the point? You always seem to, Holler. We need a new farm manager. Somebody that can take these yearlings and school them right before they leave the farm. I don't want to take a chance on another Tom Thumb slipping away, if you get my meaning. I think you're the man for the job. Salary's fair. You get a chance to work for the best. You and your niece would have a house right here on the grounds. School bus runs right by the main gate there. You're a clever girl. I don't need to tell you what that kind of money can buy. I'll have to think about it. Well, of course, that is your decision. But in 24 hours, I will put a stop payment on that check. Do you know what that means? That means that in 24 hours, the offer is void and the matter is closed. Can I think about it? Chance of a lifetime, Eddie. They don't come along often. Yeah, I've noticed. Did you give him hack? You bet I did. How about you? Oh, dear. Just doesn't want to go today. Hey, yeah, come up a little sore on the front end. Oh, well, work them light. Maybe we'll be ready for Saturday. We'll have them ready. Hey, Danny, what's going on? 
Nothing, just thinking. You hear what we said out there? Yeah. You know what Saturday is? Of course, the Tucker Steaks. The Tucker Steaks, yeah, we thought you'd be jumping up and down. Just, I don't know. Maybe he's not ready. Could be he's not. Well, he's ready. We're ready, aren't we, Gerald? Oh, he's raring to show his stuff. Yeah. Really? Really. Really? So you got that nominated for him? Yeah, right here, my notebook. Danny, what's this? Nothing. What are you going to tell us about this? I wasn't. It was made out to me, you know. Do you understand what a partnership is? That's when all of us decide what's right for us, not one person. It's about mutual trust. So then when were you going to tell me about McVie offering you a job at Slosson Farms, huh? How did you find out about that? She told me. Well, that's different. How different? Look, I have no intention of selling that horse back to Mrs. Slauson. Oh, it's, it's okay for you to decide why, because you're older than well, me? Well, something like that, yeah. If it wasn't for me, you'd still be dragging me to how'd you do around the track every other now, week. Now, wait a second. Hey, you got a lot of nerve. And if it wasn't for Gerald, we wouldn't have enough money to claim him. Oh, if it weren't for me, the horse never would have gotten out of the gate. Tom would have found a way. Oh, yes? Yeah. Says who? Stop it. Both of you. Now. Come on. I mean, we're partners, right? Now, Danny, you should know what you got there, it's a lot of money. Money we could all use, but you especially. I mean, all that talk about dreams, right there in that check. A lot of people got money. We're the only ones who got Tom. So it seems to me that there's a vote to be taken among partners. Yeah. yeah. All right, then. We'll give it the old one for the money, two for the show, OK? What? One finger, we keep the money. Two fingers, we enter Tom and the Tucker Stakes and take our chances. You ready? All right now, on three. Yeah! <laughs> uh, I wasn't gonna cash it in anyway. <laughs> Says, better than a rabbit's foot, that's what Mooney says. What he says, what he says, better than a rabbit's foot. That's what... Hey, good luck today, Danny. Thanks. You're gonna need it. It's a perfect day for the 120th running of the Tucker State. The finest thoroughbreds from around the country have been saddled in the paddock by some of the finest traders. Named after that infamous horseman, Colonel Ronald Fenton Tucker, the Tucker State is one of Kentucky's. All right, it's gonna be a fun one today, boss. Yep. Look, keep them settled around the turns. Don't try anything fancy, all right? All right. Good luck today, Danielle. Same to you, Miss Lawson.
creepy guy who asked me about Tom. Gerald, can you see him? Is that the guy who was in our bar? severely bowed, all that straining to win. Might be best if we just put him down. No. There must be something. Well, there's always something, Eddie. Eddie, please don't let them put Tom down. Do what you have to do. Eddie, please save him. Honey. Please. Now, you can come with me Eddie, now. please. Please. Come on, let your uncle take please. care of this. All right? I hate him. Now, who would that be? Snap to do it. Dumbledore's his best. He did better than best. I 
I think if you're referring to your uncle, I think you got it all wrong. No, I don't. Well, then shame on you. Shame on you for thinking that your 11 years on this earth give you the wisdom to... You think you're the only one hurting around here? Don't you have any idea what this means to Eddie? To me? Haven't you got any idea about anything except yourself? Hey, look, Danny. Please, don't let anything happen to him. Not to Tom. He did his best. Don't let him be put down. It's too much to ask for. Take it away from me. Gotta admire that little so-and-so. Even with you yanking on him, he pulled right up to the money. It went all right. But you could have done better. You should have stuck to him longer. Yeah, yeah, could have, should have, would have. You got my money or what? Yeah, I got your money. Danny? You all right? All right, now don't spend no money in town. You get out, get out fast. That's okay with me. This place gives me the creeps. Remember, don't flash this around. You know that guy, Sully? I know that guy. He's just a fella paying a side bet off, too. Why? Eddie. Why would you mess with my horse? Why would you mess with Tom? I asked you a question. I, I did it. I did it to impress McVie. McVie put you up to this. It was my idea. He didn't know nothing about it, Eddie. I, I, I messed up on claiming the horse. I, I had to show him that I, I still could be a mover. You and I, we cried over my brother's grave. I trusted you, Sully. I'm thinking, hey, Sully's watching out for me. But you never were. We all want that move up, Eddie. Get out of here. Just business, Eddie. Hey, Sally, how you doing? I believe these gentlemen in uniform would like to have a word with you. You okay? Yeah, honey. I'm okay. Yeah, that real bird is singing, and I don't think Sally likes the song. The final results of the Tucker Stakes are in. The judges have declared Tom Thumb. The official winner. Well, well. You won. And Keeneland wishes Tom Thumb a speedy recovery. Call this morning. No kidding. Job's still open if we want it. And? Yeah, nothing. I told him we'd talk it over. Spending the winter on Slossy Farm would be a pretty good deal. Sure would beat that leaky old trailer. Yeah, I guess. But we're doing okay, aren't we? Yeah, we're doing fine. Just fine. Guess luck finally found its way to the Fortuna Barn, hmm? Huh? Luck always favors a long shot. Nope. Luck always favors the best horse. Right, Tom? 